Good morning, my friends. This is Pastor Stephen Brooks. Welcome today to Morning Glory, our midweek Bible study, and I'm so glad that you are here today. Now, I want to talk today from the book of Numbers, chapter 20, about how God can bring provision for you, even in a remote, desert, isolated place, a place where Every situation would say, this is not possible, but God can bring provision for you, even if he has to bring it out of a rock. My friends, because you have a miracle working God in your life, you can expect to receive God's miracles. We're going to talk about this today, Numbers chapter 20. And before I jump into the message, let me also say a big thank you to those that sowed into our what we call the tech package with the encoder uh, and, you know, some computers and stuff like that. So I'm just, I am so happy in my spirit for those that connect it with that biblical principle of I've got it. In other words, when there's an opportunity that the Lord highlights and presents that somebody says, I want to get that one. I, I want to take it. And there were those that rose up. Yes, of course, God moved and all the glory to the Lord. And I, But it makes me so happy for those that heard the Lord's leading and they caught that revelation and jumped on it. And yes, I'll be placing the uh, order for the encoder later today. And uh, yes, every single computer in the ministry will be upgraded to a brand new Fast running i7 uh, uh, computers, the best of the best, will be uh, placed in that order within a few days. So I just want to say thank, uh, thank you to everybody that sewed into it. And uh, you know, this is an amazing principle because I was meditating on this uh, even this morning. And, you know, there's another ministry here in town. You know, it's fascinating. We, uh, in some ways, are a small county. There's about or maybe 70,000 people in the county. But in this one county, there's over 300 churches. And, uh, you know, you have some ministries that are more uh, broad in their scope, such as, you know, having an international platform, ours, by God's grace, being one of those. But there is also one ministry. They have a, I'd call it a pretty good size budget. They run about a billion dollars a year. Uh, That's billion with the B, as in bacon. (laughs) That's a lot of bacon, praise God. Uh, But you know what? I think it's so cool that even in their, uh, you know, with a a blessing where that much provision flows in, even when they have opportunities for people to sow into areas that will bless Christian families in various parts of the world— They'll say, they'll even say, we need somebody to take care of a goat for this family. Why? Well, if that family has a goat, a a male and a female goat, now you can have cheese, you can have milk, you can start to make some clothing. It's fascinating. So, and you'll have somebody that'll stand up and say, "Uh, I'm going to get 10 goats. Uh, That way, those in that Christian village, they can be blessed and they can have their own goats and although this this ministry, very rock solid ministry, preaching the gospel, although they they are running about a billion dollars a year with their budget, they'll say, you know what, uh, we want to provide uh, this Christian family with the cow. Who wants who wants to pay for the cow? <laughs> And somebody will rise up and say, I'll take care of the cow, but I'll also take care of three more. Let's give them four cattle. Let's get them into the rancher business, praise God. Now they have a means of provision. Now that that family, uh, they can take those animals and begin to breed them and begin to use them. Now they've got milk and all, I mean, on and on it goes, whether it's a goat or an encoder, whether it's a cow or new computers, something happens on the inside of a believer when they see divine opportunity that speaks to them, and they say, I've got that. I I, I want that. Woo! Woo! Praise God. And that's what I'm trying to turn so many of you into. Uh, Yes, 
you, in a sense, need to receive so that you can be a blessing. But never forget, Jesus said it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. So when you're, you are the one that's giving, or you're the one that's saying, I've got that, I, I'm happy for you. Why? Because I know that I know how God works through people like that. So uh, if you have a billion dollar ministry saying, who'd like to take the goat? It makes me very happy to say, who'd like to take the computer? Who'd like to take the encoder? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Bishop David Oyedipo in Nigeria pastors a church of over 400,000 members. They are building right now, and I think they're in the, they're in the second phase, they're, they're building a sanctuary that seats 109,000 people. Now, of course, they can't get all of their congregants into one meeting. They'll still have to run multiple meetings but, you know, Bishop Oyedipo will stand up sometimes and, and say, who wants to take 10 churches? Who wants to pay for the building of 10 churches? And people will jump up all over wanting to be the one that can have that honor to fulfill that opportunity. Look, opportunities are for your lifting. God doesn't need my help. He doesn't need your help to fund what really is a global work. The body of Christ is enormous. <laughs> I know some of you think that Amazon is big. You think that maybe Google is big, but worldwide, the body of Christ is amazing. There's no way I could fund it. Uh, there's no way, uh, even as an individual, even if you had billions of dollars, you could fund it. But we are honored to be able to participate in in it. Praise God. It's a joy. Praise the Lord. So here's a secret. Even if this ministry has $2 billion sitting over here in savings, now I don't have $2 billion in savings, but if I did, I'm still going to present needs. Why? Is it so we can help Jesus out? It's so that you can have your opportunity for lifting. And the way that you are lifted by God's grace is not by always wanting somebody else to carry the responsibility, but by saying, you know what? I might not be able to give a million dollars, but I tell you what, I could buy a cow. Praise God. I've got $200. Yeah. Amen. And some, you know, some person that's in poverty gets that cow and that, that's the world to them. <laughs> and they're praising God. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. I just felt led of the Holy Spirit to touch on that. It's a big planet. God's doing a great work all over the world. You know, I think about uh, the general overseer, uh, Dr. Enoch Adeboye. He has, you know, has multiple meeting places. Church, he has 50,000 churches underneath him. And, but they have one meeting place that's eight, that's, it's 1.8 miles wide and 1.8 miles, not feet, 1.8 miles long and can seat over a million people. And it's often filled to overflowing. Praise God. Hallelujah. And God has given me the privilege, my wife and I, to be able to travel around the world. And while many in the Western church still fight the concept of biblical prosperity, and uh, like on my YouTube channel, sometimes I'll have somebody uh, type something in on the comments and say, I don't believe in prosperity. Now, now, now think about the stupidity of this. They're typing in, I don't believe in prosperity, while they're typing it on their, their $1,200 iPhone. I don't really agree with prosperity, Pastor Stephen. Oh, while you're typing that on your Apple laptop, right, that you paid $2,000 for? Yeah, I'm sure. Right, right. <laughs> All of those people that say that in real life, they're total frauds. They're total frauds. And they, they, they say these types of things. They'll say like, well, I only drive a Toyota. A Toyota? Or, or I only drive a Hyundai. A Hyundai? Hello, you're wealthier than 99% of the rest of the world if you're driving a car. Yes, most people are still walking on foot or riding on a donkey. You, you'll know that when you travel worldwide. Mm -mm. But here in the church, the enemy is really targeted 
God's people to keep them with blinders on so they don't understand that when we are blessed financially, we can have the privilege of pushing the gospel around the world so souls are saved, lives are built up. Oh, it's so good. So yes, all the gear has been purchased. That giving opportunity is now closed. Why is it closed, Pastor Stephen? Because it was met uh, with an overabundance. It's closed. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I want to give, Pastor Stephen, catch the next bus. Amen. Catch the next opportunity that God presents for your lifting. Mm -hmm. Now, you can always tithe. You could always send an offering, which is anything above the tithe. But when God presents something special, it's not because God's broke. Uh, it's because these are opportunities for you, which is why with some of the ministry needs, my wife and I pay for the whole thing on some things. We will we'll like, we'll buy that whole lighting package. We'll buy that entire hardware kit that's needed for this or whatever it might be. Why? Because <laughs> I practice what I preach. Woo, praise God. Amen. Don't be looking for me at the Subway sandwich shop eating a po' boy sandwich. <laughs> You might find me at the subway shop, but I'll be eating the steak. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's not arrogance. That's just knowing that God has not called us to live under the curse of lack or insufficiency. So kind of along these lines, let's talk about this today. Numbers chapter 20, let me get a drink of hot tea. And let me pray for everybody that sold into the tech pa uh, package project. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you bless them, that they saw kingdom opportunity, not a preacher begging for help. They saw a kingdom opportunity and they responded to it. Now let the anointing of, I've got that, now come on them in a greater degree where the, they could even double on the next opportunity. They would even have strength to double on the next opportunity. Let that grace of, I've got that, come upon them with a divine empowerment to walk in it. Father, whether they gave $10, whether they gave more, whatever it was, 5,000, whatever a person would have given, let that grace now be on them to go to the next level. In Jesus' name, we all say amen. Praise God. Well, Numbers chapter 20. Numbers chapter 20. Let's start in verse 1. Then the children of Israel... The whole congregation came into the wilderness of Zin in the first month, and the people stayed in Kadesh, and Miriam died there and was buried there. Now there was no water for the congregation, so they gathered together against Moses and Aaron. Heavenly Father, as we study your word, let light and illumination break forth upon your people in this area of receiving miracle provision. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. There was no water. Verse 3, And the people contended with Moses and spoke, saying, If only we had died when our brethren died before the Lord. Why have you brought up the assembly of the, of the Lord into this wilderness that we and our animals should die here? And why have you made us come up out of Egypt to bring us to this evil place? It is not a place of grain or figs or vines or pomegranates, nor is there any water to drink. Well, we do see a lot of negativity here, and that's kind of standard par for the course with those who are rebellious. But my friends, we also do see a legitimate uh, issue that they're bringing up. So as leaders... You have to listen with a careful ear. Uh, is this a bad spirit? And this, is this just like they're looking to dump negativity on you? Or is there something legitimate in what they're saying, even if they are presenting, presenting it with the wrong attitude? So we could condense it. If, if they wanted to just do the right thing, they could have said, Moses, uh, there's, there's no water to drink. And Moses would have said, yeah, well, that, that's going to become a problem pretty quick, isn't it? I'd better find out what to do. <laughs> so there is a real issue here. But even when there are real issues, you always want to have the right heart if you're presenting it. And if you're the leader, let's say you're the, uh, you're the CEO or the employer, the boss, you know, then you need to have that wisdom also to know there, there is something here that I need to... Uh, 
I need to get this ironed out. Praise the Lord. Now, verse 6. So Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly, so they, they left the people. And by the way, it, uh, the way this is uh, portrayed, it doesn't look good the way that these leaders came to Moses. It almost looked like they were trying to catch him and Aaron when they were coming out of their tents. And maybe they, they'd probably already talked and really gotten themselves worked up. And you could have been looking at something on the edge of a stoning where they're so mad and they've gotten over into the flesh so bad that uh, there was a lot of anger here that uh, really could have gone in a wrong direction. And so Moses and Aaron, they get away from the people, went from the presence of the assembly to the door of the tabernacle of meeting, and they fell on their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared to them. So when uh, in your, let me say it like this, in your own personal life, when you have issues that pop up, tough things that you don't really know what to do, then we need to follow the same example, which is what? Just get on your face before the Lord. Now, you don't have to, in a sense, lay out physically, although there's uh, uh, various scriptures such as this one that give insight into that humility of prostrating yourself before God. And you want to stay there uh, until you begin to become conscious of, uh, conscious or aware of the Lord's presence. And then the Lord, while you're in that position of humility, he will talk to you and tell you what to do. The problem with quite a few believers is that they run into issues or problems of life that are bigger than them. And they don't really know what to do, so they they just start maybe calling, uh, well, let's call this person, call that person. Now, if God tells you to call somebody, that's fine, but they never really get on their face before the Lord and get into the glory so that they can receive answers. So that's something that we always need to be uh, mindful of doing, because we all have times when, at the moment, we don't have the answer but if we seek the Lord, he will give it to us. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, take the rod. Now, this is not Aaron's rod that budded. This is the rod that Moses carried. And this is the same rod that he used in the splitting of the Red Sea. Take the rod. You and your brother Aaron gathered the congregation together. Speak to the rock before their eyes, and it will yield its water. Thus, you shall bring water for them out of the rock and give drink to the congregation and their animals. Now, this is not the first time that we've had a water problem. Matter of fact, in the book of Exodus chapter 17 and in verse 6, there was the initial issue with where is the water going to come from, and it was during that time that God told Moses to strike the rock once. Now, that's found in Exodus 17. Let me just read that for a moment. Now, I want you to keep in mind that here we are in Numbers 20, but I'm going to turn back now to Exodus chapter 17, verse 6. And as I do so, I'm turning back 38 years in time. And we're going, you know, because the wilderness journey was 40 years. So we're going to go back 38 years. And uh, when they were just almost like beginning, and they had the lack of water. Now, the Jewish rabbis, the commentators that have become very famous throughout the centuries, they all agree in harmony that while God did that first miracle when Moses struck the rock and water came forth, that as they continued on, God would always supernaturally supply the water. So what we were seeing in Numbers chapter 20 was a different type of situation where, for some reason, uh, the water's not showing up. And really, it was a test, again, a test. Have you learned anything over the last 38 years? Or is all the negativity, all the complaining going to start to come out when you face a test? Well, we, we read what happened. What came out was not good. <laughs> and it really started to rub Moses the wrong way. And that's a very, very uh, dangerous time. You've got to be walking in the Spirit. This is not just for preachers. 
This is for all believers. Now, Exodus 17, verse 6. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock in Horeb. So this is even a different place. This is in Horeb. And you shall strike the rock, and water will come out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And everybody had plenty of water. All of the animals had plenty of water. And God would continue over the next 38 years to supply them with water on a needed basis. And, you know, if you need to wash your clothes, uh, anything, there's plenty of water. Now, let's go back to Numbers chapter 20. Praise the Lord. Take the rod. You and your brother Aaron gathered the congregation together. Okay, so far, so good. Speak to the rod. Oh, that's, that's different. That's new. Speak to the rock. In other words, take your rod, because the Jewish commentators say that that rock was just over there, not too far away. Everybody could see it. In other words, take your rod, point it in that direction, and all you have to do is speak. That's all you've got to do. Speak to the rock before their eyes, and it will yield its water. Thus, you shall bring water for them out of the rock and give drink to the congregation and their animals. So Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him, and then things go terribly wrong. And Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock, and he said to them, Hear now, you rebels! Must we bring water for you out of this rock? Moses was frustrated. You have to be very, very careful that if you are sensing frustration, we can all sense it. You could get cut off in traffic. You could have somebody at the supermarket uh literally pull in front of you and take a spot that you were there first for, and they pull in. And you can think, Lord, um, would be kind of nice if we uh, had that Elijah anointing right now to call down some fire. You could have somebody maybe curse you or some, I mean, something nasty. Just be, and All you're trying to do is maybe uh, go about your day, but you know, just people can be really demonic and people can be really nasty sometimes. Uh, reminds me of a, a friend one time. He, he told me this. He would kind of he couldn't understand it. He he was uh, a, a young Christian, and he was uh, in his car. And he was driving, and he pulls up to a red light, and there's a car in front of him. Now the car in front of him had a sticker on the bumper, and it said "Honk if you love Jesus." Oh, he said, "Wasn't well, that nice?" And so he honked his horn. But he honked his horn right when the light went from red to green. And so the light had turned just turned green, and he honked his horn. Yeah, your sign says, honk if you love Jesus. And he honked his horn. Well, the guy with the bumper sticker on his car up ahead leaned out of the window, turned around, and obviously thought, like, he's honking. Like, can't you wait? And the light just turned green and gave him the, the middle finger. Pastor Stephen, is that the victory sign? No, no, no. That's the go to the hot place sign. <laughs> and so my friend was like, I thought he was a Christian. Uh, no, brother. No, maybe he was, but he was, you know, no. So we can, we can all maybe get hit with like a frustration or something like that, but you can't, you can't strike out. You can't get in the flesh. You can't let that push you into something that is a wrong direction that God doesn't want you to go. Now, we're, we are under uh, grace. We're not under the law. It's not like we're going to, um, you know, have something awful. Like, of course, you know, this, this event is going to keep Moses from going into the promised land. So it's not like if you blow it, make a mistake, you can't go to heaven. But God was trying to present something here that we do need to take a look at a little more closely. Praise God. Now, here now, you rebels, must we bring water for you out of this rock? Then Moses lifted his hand and struck the rock twice. I mean, not just once. He did it twice. Now, remember, he has struck the rock before, 38 years earlier, but God told him, just do it once. He only did it one time. Here, he not only does the wrong thing, he doesn't talk to it. He hits it, and he doesn't even, uh, he, uh, he does it twice. And water came out abundantly, and the congregation and their animals drank. Now, I do know that there are quite a few believers that don't understand that. 
but you have to understand how God works. If Moses in his anger, which is wrong, struck the rock, which was wrong, but if God did not still do a miracle, every single Israelite would have said, see, God's not with him anymore. We're leaving. We're done. You're, you're obviously not, God, not God's man. And there would have been a rebellion like you wouldn't have believed. So here's what God does. He still does the miracle in front of eyes of all the people because they don't really catch what fully is going on here. But then behind the scenes, God deals with Moses one-on-one and he's in trouble. Mm -mm. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, because you did not believe me to hallow me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, you shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them. This was the water of Meribah, because, which means contention, like quarreling, the water of quarreling. This was the water of Meribah because the children of Israel contended with the Lord and he was hallowed among them, among them, but Moses disrespected the Lord in his act. So you have a word that's used in the New Testament scriptures, which is the word type, T-Y-P-E. And that is a reference back to the Old Testament where we have real life stories. But in these stories, God was creating types. Sometimes it's called a shadow. In other words, in the Old Testament, you had the shadow. In the New Testament, you had the substance. In the Old Testament, you had prophetic word pictures. But in the New Testament, you have the reality. So the reality, uh, or excuse me, the substance was God told Moses, strike the rock once. He did. That was a word picture or a type of Jesus, our rock, being struck by God only one time. In other words, he doesn't have to die over and over again and pay for the penalty of sins somehow over and over again. No, he's going to be struck one time. That is is sufficient. Now, this time, 38 years later, in the book of Numbers chapter 20, God this time wants Moses to speak to the rock, which will further establish the former precedent, the former type and shadow that he has presented. And Moses blurs, he blurs that. It, it's like he messes it all up. So God has to correct him. He cannot let this go. Why? Because can you imagine being a theologian and he, okay, one time he struck the rock, the rock represented Christ, our redeemer, but now he's being struck twice. I, I don't get it. Is he going to, have to like die twice? So it really uh, muddied the waters in what God was trying to create. So God fixed it by bringing in a different type and shadow. Because of this, Moses is now barred from going into the land of Canaan, the promised land. What is it now representing? That you can never make it to heaven. You can never make it into the new birth experience with uh, just by being a good person or doing the works of the law. Pastor Stephen, I've never stolen ever in my life. Therefore, I've kept the law. I've never stolen. I've never murdered anybody. I've never profaned or used profanity, used bad curse words, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Therefore, I'm good enough to be right before God. No, uh, no man's justified by the law, which is why Moses could not go in. Guess who did? Joshua. So Joshua goes in representing a different, genera uh, different generation, representing Jesus, because that's what Joshua's name means. It means Yeshua, Savior. That's the same name as Jesus. Jesus is a Greek transliteration of the Old Testament word uh, Yeshua, Savior. Woo, praise God. So God just went ahead and created like a new, a new thing. Okay, he can't come in because he represents the law. You can never be right or justified with God by good works although you still do good works. Sometimes people say, well, we're not under the law anymore. I'm like, I, that is correct. We're not, but it doesn't mean that you don't walk in the, the, the insight and the, the commandments of the law, because when God said, you shall not steal, uh, that passed through the cross. That's an eternal principle. And honestly, even 10 billion years from now, theft or stealing would still be wrong. Now, there won't be any of that going on because 
Satan by that time, and not too far in the near future, will be thrown into the lake of fire that burns with fire and brimstone. That place is already prepared for him. I know there's, you know, the tribulation period, there's the thousand year reign, then he comes back for a very short season, has one final run, and then he's done for all eternity. <laughs> but the truth is, we're not under the law. Uh, we are under grace. So if you make a mistake, praise God, there is mercy. Uh, upon repentance, there's forgiveness. And uh, it's just a beautiful thing that God did here. Praise the Lord. So uh, God is trying to share some amazing things with us. I want to kind of loop back to the miracle of the, uh, the rock, that all he would have to do is speak to it. Now, we already know that God has brought water out of a rock, and they are in a desert area. So let's think about this just for a moment. How come the desert is so dry? Well, that's easy, Pastor Stephen. I, 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 I studied science when I was in the sixth grade. I took a science course. The reason the desert is dry is because it doesn't rain. Oh, you get the A+. Plus. Praise God. Let's go further in our sixth grade science class. Yes, it doesn't rain. That's why it's dry. The desert is barren and the ground is cracked. How, how come it doesn't rain? Well, that's a good question, Pastor Stephen. The reason it doesn't rain is because there's no evaporation. In other words, nothing is going up. And if nothing is going up, ain't nothing coming down. Woo! I get, I get letters sometimes from people that are very young in their faith. Pastor Stephen, when am I going to see my harvest? I have sown seed. That's wonderful. What does that mean? If you're sowing seed, but you have not yet had a harvest, it simply means that this, when you give to the Lord, now I'm not talking about the tithe that already belongs to him, but when you give offerings to the Lord, you are giving up and your seed goes up and you are forming a cloud. You're forming a cloud. What you have to do is you have to keep sending up until your cloud gets so full that it literally cannot hold it anymore, and suddenly there is a downpour, not on just what you sent up, but it's coming down, multiplied over, running over. Woo! Look, when you pour, that's how you get into more. When you pour, when you give seed, it goes up and forms a cloud. When's my harvest going to happen? I can't tell you, but I can't, I can't tell you that but I can tell you uh, how it works. So let me give you an idea. When your cloud is full is when your harvest is going to come. When it just cannot, the heavens can't contain it anymore and whoop, the whole thing falls. <laughs> That's when your harvest will come. So what do you need to do? Keep sending up, keep sending up because it is going to come down and it will come down multiplied in a torrent a blessing, a tort of overflow. You'll have so much, you'll pay the tithe and you'll still think I've got so much. You just, you'll start giving. What are you doing? Now you're forming more clouds. You're sending back up, sending back up. And that's how God established the cycle on the earth. Uh, evaporation goes up, rain comes down. Evaporation goes up, rain comes down. And the only place where it doesn't work is where there's nothing going up. That's why it's a desert. Mm. Well, Pastor Stephen, if it's, there's a desert, well, then it's hopeless. There's nothing we can do. Uh, if you work biblical principles, God can get it to you no matter where you live. Let's say that you live in a small town. Oh, Pastor Stephen, now it's not going to work. This is like an economic desert here. And you go to your small town's like what we would call like the uh, main drive, the like main street. And all of the stores, which flourished back in 1930, they all look derelict now, right? They all look either shut down or they look like they are a hundred years old and only, you know, they're, they're, nothing's really selling, nothing's going on, hardly any traffic. And you think, I'm in a desert economic situation. There's no way I could get blessed here. But you can. You can't. Why? Because the God that you serve is the only true living God, and he happens to be a God who is so miraculous in nature, he can actually bring water out of a rock. Stop for a moment. The water that came out of the rock was what for the people? It was, well, Pastor Stephen, it's water to quench their thirst. 
yes, but it's provision. It's the provision that they need it. I want to tell you on the authority of God's word that if he needs to, God can bring provision for you out of a rock in the middle of a barren desert with no natural hope, no possibility for it to happen. But with God, all things are possible. Let's go further. If God can bring water, follow me. If God can bring water out of a rock, which he did, Many times over, we saw it initially happen at Horeb. You see it later happening there in Numbers chapter 20. All of the Jewish rabbis say that it is recorded in the, uh, in the, the uh, oral history of the Jewish people that after the first bringing forth of the water, God would always do it for them throughout the entire time up until where you saw Numbers chapter 20 and God wanted to do something new with the speaking Glory, 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 glory to God. But my friends, if God can bring water out of a rock, he did. If he can bring provision out of a rock, which is what the water was, he can bring money out of a rock. You know, I meet some believers. It seems like they think everybody in the world is poor. You do know that that not everybody is poor. (laughs) <laughs> I know there's only about 400 billionaires. Maybe you don't know one. Maybe what? Maybe one doesn't even live in your area. We've got actually uh, several that live here in our little county. It's it's uh, Bank of America came out of this county. Lowe's Home Improvement came out of this county. Uh, they may be wearing overalls and, and uh, work boots. Uh, don't laugh. Don't don't snicker. They've probably got more money than. Uh, they're loaded like you wouldn't believe. Woo, some of them old boys, they got some money. Yeah, and they like to chew tobacco, and they like to wear bib overalls, and they're multimillionaires many, many, many times over. Woo, praise the Lord. Mm. But this is what I want to say, is that God can get it to you anywhere any place. You've got to stop saying, I'm in a desert situation. You've got to stop saying, Pastor Stephen, you don't understand my situation. And maybe I don't. Maybe I don't know how bad it really is. All I know is that God can get it to you even if he has to bring it out of a rock. He can bring it out of a person, say, hey, I want to give, I want to be a blessing to you. Mm. I went and preached one time in a, in a Baptist church here locally in this county. The whole church was about Oh, maybe if I'm generous, maybe I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be generous. It was a thousand square feet. <laughs> oh, it had a basement that was 500, very spacious, 500 square feet. So I preached in that church one time. The, the pastor got filled with the Holy Spirit, spoke in tongues. God healed his back. He was, uh, he was a pastor. He was bivocational. He was a pastor. He had a gutter business, and he fell off the top ladder, landed on his back, and uh, didn't break his back, but did something so severe that he was in agony. God completely healed his back in the service and uh, 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 and did a miracle for him. But you know what? He uh, needed his windows replaced in, in, in the church. He had a visitor come into the church one day, and, and this pastor said, you know, we really do need some new windows. And uh, uh, somebody in... Uh, like a bib overall, said, oh, I'll take care of that, and uh, bought all the windows. That man wearing the bib overall owns a Gulfstream G550. Yeah, I, I think he can handle the windows. <laughs> Woo, praise God. All I'm trying to say is not everybody's poor. God, God can get it to you from a rock. God can get it to you from anywhere. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. And It's not like God runs out no more than the cycle of evaporation, moisture going up, rain coming down. It's not like that ever is going to run out. I mean, that's going on over all of the oceans of the earth. It's going on all over the world, and it's never going to stop. It's not like it's going to break and it doesn't work anymore. God established it as a natural law and as a spiritual law. And it's not like there is a supply. Oh, we we don't, it's not going to ever rain. Uh, No, it's raining somewhere right now, maybe in Hawaii, uh, maybe in the jungles of uh, of the Amazon where it's being drenched. And then right after that, evaporation is taking it right back up and it's just going to keep on going until Jesus comes back. And even after that, it'll keep on going. There's no lack. He can get it to you. Praise God. 
Well, what do I do, Pastor Stephen? Okay, I, I believe it. What do I do? First thing, don't strike the rock. Don't force it. Don't try to make it happen. I haven't had my, my harvest yet, Pastor Stephen. I've been given now for two months. It's not, nothing's happening. Uh, two months, two years, keep on going. Keep on going until you get your downpour. Mm -hmm. But see, sometimes people, they, they want it to happen. Well, it's not happened yet. I'll tell you what, I'm going to I'm have to take over. God can't handle it. I'm going to take over and I'm going I'm to take all this money. I'm going to go invest it in that penny stock. Uh, you just destroyed your, your life savings. Mm -hmm. Well, Pastor Stephen, it's going to go high and everybody, then I can, then I can sell. Uh, yes, yeah, problem. There's no volume. You'll never sell. You're stuck in that, trapped in that. My friends, there are a thousand gimmicks and tricks to take your money. And unless God told you to do something, you've got to, you look, if, if you will sow primarily into the furtherance of God's kingdom, You'll start getting so blessed that um, you can you can just get on a foundation instead of like frustration. Frustration is striking the rock. Frustration is saying this is not working. This uh, well, ho hold on just a moment. That's saying that either God lied, uh, which we know He didn't, or maybe there's something here that we're not quite understanding. Mm -hmm. So don't let the de, uh, delay or divine time frustrate you. Don't let pesky bills that you still can't get that paid off. Don't let that frustrate you. Don't let it frustrate you. Praise God. Praise God. And keep sending up. Keep sending up as you do. What, what should you primarily do? Speak to it. Speak to it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I call my body healed. Oh, now, Pastor Stephen, you've been saying that for three months. Yeah, whatever your situation is, you have to work the word. In the name of Jesus, I call that paid off. Mm -mm. You know, I would drive out to the property out by the airport uh, last year, and even I was doing it the previous uh, year before that, you know, after we'd bought it. I'd stand on, I'd put the tailgate down on my pickup truck, stand on the tailgate, and say, in the name of Jesus, I speak and I called this property paid off in Jesus' name. Wake up the next morning, the debt's still there. Uh, uh, and go back out, speak. I call you paid off. Wake up the next morning, the debt's still there. Still there. How many know the, the debt's all paid off now? God came, God came through. God works through people as so often he does. God's never written me a check. I think it would be nice. I don't know, though, even if he did, if there's any bank that would cash it <laughs> endorsed by God. <laughs> the banker would say, uh, uh, where did you draw this check from? Well, just, uh, just run it through the system. Well, we can't run it through the system. <laughs> but you've got to see, though, God is your source. God is your source. He can get it to you, even if he's got to have ravens flapping their wings to fly it into you. So it doesn't matter if you're in the desert. It doesn't matter where you're at. I'm over here, Pastor Stephen, and I'm in Ukraine, and the whole place is destroyed, and there's not much left. We're going to starve. Not if you speak to the rock, because he can call, he can bring water out of the rock as you speak that creative word. But don't get frustrated. Start striking things. <laughs> don't strike your preacher. Don't strike Moses. Stop the okay. <laughs> Woo. I'm going to write a letter to that preacher, and I'm going to tell him why. <laughs> Ooh, praise the Lord. Mm -mm. I'm not saying that because somebody's written me a letter. I'm just saying that I know how life is. I, Pastor Stephen, I, what, what's going on? Well, just relax and do your thing and speak. Speak to the rock and say, and stretch out the rod, which is your authority in Christ, and say, in the name of Jesus, I command this thing to move. Praise the Lord. In the name of Jesus, I command this thing to be accomplished, or whatever it is. Whatever it is, you can talk to it. You can talk to it. So, we have God telling a man to talk to a, a, a rock. We have Jesus talking to a, free, a, a, a fig tree. Don't you know when Jesus exploded verbally on that fig tree, that fig tree just died so quick. I mean, that was like, <laughs> can you imagine God talking to you? Oh, brother, it's over. I mean, the thing, I, 
Wow. I mean, Jesus could have exploded that tree if he wanted to with his powerful words, but it, it, it instantly, just instantly killed that tree. I mean, it was dead the moment he said it. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. So, so Jesus was filled with the spirit without measure. So, you know, we just though have to keep working it. And as we do keep our faith up, you'll see it happen. Now, I want to pray over anybody that maybe you feel a little frustrated. Maybe you think I should be further down the line or whatever the case might be. Don't, don't hit the rock. Don't get in the frustration. Don't say, well, I tell you one thing, customers aren't buying my product. I'm going to call them up right now and I'm going to tell them what I think. Uh, no, just keep doing your thing. Keep working. Maybe you're trying to start your own business. Keep working. Keep working it. Keep doing your thing. Okay, sending seed up, sending uh, moisture up, uh, sending evaporation up, even in the desert. It'll, okay, fill your clouds. Watch what God will do for you. What is my assignment after this message, Pastor Stephen? What is my assignment? Speak to the situation. Speak to the situation. God can bring money for you out of a rock. God can bring uh, the healing that you need. I, oh, Pastor Stephen, I can't get to one of those large conventions and have the great healing evangelist lay hands on me. I had God heal me one time sitting on a couch in the apartment at home years back, and uh, Jesus just came in. His glory was there, healed me all up completely. God, God can get to you anywhere you are. Even if you're watching me and you're in prison, God can get in there and heal you. God can deliver you. Lift your hands. Father, I pray for anybody that's been experiencing perhaps frustration, maybe situations like the Israelites frustrated Moses and uh, he struck the rock because he's upset. I just pray for your people, oh God, that they would just relax, trust you, speak to the rock, and know that your word will never fail. I thank you, Father God, for the great miracles that are going to happen. I thank you, Father, that your people, they are in this for the long haul from the perspective that they are kingdom committed, covenant understanding believers. I thank you, Father God, that they're going to see your glory. They're going to see, uh, I believe, a breaking forth even within the next three months of February, March, or actually, we're in February. Uh, we're in uh, February, February, March, April. They will see. They will see things begin to open up, and they will truly say, "Oh God, that you are moving." I pray you bless your people. I pray you bless your people with wisdom to walk in the light of your word. And I pray, Father, that even after this message today, they would find a suitable place, maybe a private place where they could do some speaking, and they can call some things forth. I give you all of the praise. Thank you, Father, for your precious people. Bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo! Amen in Jesus' name. Now, if you're watching me today and you don't know Jesus, but something has drawn you here, and you can't even really explain why, it's the Holy Spirit, and God loves you. And God wants you to have peace with him. You can never make your life right with God just by going around doing good works. It's not like your good works will outrage your bad ones and then you get in. It doesn't work like that. You have to be born again. So it's time for you to make your peace with God. It also, there's another group. If you're watching, maybe you used to serve the Lord, but you got off track. It's time to come back today, get restored. I want to pray for you also. Let us both now, let us pray together. Just say, Lord Jesus... I repent of all of my sins. Save me now. Come into my heart. Wash my sins away with your precious blood. Jesus, thank you for saving me. Write my name in your book of life. Thank you, Jesus. Step into my life and lead me and guide me from this day forward. In your name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Woo! And amen. Praise God. Amen. Welcome to the family of God. Amen. Glory. If you had gotten away, welcome back to the sheepfold. Mm -mm. Praise the Lord. Now, let's take Holy Communion today. Grab some unleavened bread. 
Grab some grape juice. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Glory, glory to God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the bread and the juice. Through this prayer, we bless it and set it apart as being holy. We thank you that this is the body and the blood of Jesus. Father, as we receive the Lord's flesh, we thank you that you can't lie. It's just impossible. You can't do it. You can't lie. We thank you that your principles work and you are lifting your people and they will see your mighty hand upon your life. We celebrate you and your faithfulness in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's partake together. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the correct pattern. Jesus was only struck once. He was not like the other high priest who would cover sin through their ceremonial acts, but then would die. Then another priest has to do it. And on and on this went, with animals being sacrificed by the millions over the millennia. But we thank you that Jesus was struck once. He became a curse for us so that we could be free from the curse, free from spiritual death. We thank you, Father, as we receive the blood of Jesus, that we are ever, ever thankful and mindful of the great price that he paid for our freedom. Woo! Thank you, O oh God. Freedom from every bondage of darkness. We thank you for it. We thank you that he's perfect. Everything about him is perfect. We give you praise, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's receive the Lord's blood. Glory to God. Let me pop up on the screen the giving information as these messages strengthen your faith and help you with your walk with God. I ask that you would help me just send them all over the world. Praise God. Not just on YouTube, but on the various uh, television networks that we are on. That information to give is now on the screen. We are broadcasting out of Bethlehem, Israel, three times a week, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday night, sharing the gospel all over uh, Israel, even particularly into the Gaza area. There are a lot of uh, uh, people that are watching it. I'm sure there are many in Hamas. Of course, they all need to get saved. But God's word is going all over the Middle East as well as into over 200 other nations of the world every single week. Thank you for being a part of that. Thank you for your giving. Father, bless your people. I thank you for their love for this ministry. I thank you for primarily their love for your word. They're very, very hungry. And I just pray, Father God, that, that they be fed with the finest of the wheat, not only with the revelatory words that they are receiving, but Father God, also with the good things of life. Let them truly walk in the best as your ambassadors and as your representatives in the earth. Lord, may every person under the sound of my voice live out the full number of their days that you have allotted for them, a long, healthy life blessed with wisdom, strength, and prosperity. In the name of Jesus, amen. Praise God. Thanks for watching. Again, thank you for helping us to uh, knock off the tech package. You knocked it out of the park. Praise God. That opportunity is now closed. Thank you. By God's grace, we have done it. And uh, thank you for the tithe that continues to move the general budget forward as we can continue to do these global outreaches. Thank you so much. From here in Moravian Falls, we love you. Look forward to seeing you back again real soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.